I just read five complete prompt engineering guides from Google, OpenAI, Anthropic, and NVIDIA. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about prompt engineering from these billion dollar companies without having to spend hours reading them yourself. You don't need to be a coder or an engineer, anyone can write these prompts. At the end of this video, you're gonna be familiar with all of the secret techniques used by these companies to produce precise AI results. Whether you're building conversational AI systems, gen AI products, or just wanna learn how to communicate better with AI like ChatGPT, this video is for you. I've divided this video into five sections based on the most important content that these guides talk about. First, we have prompt structures. These are the key elements that every AI prompt should include, no matter the use case. After this, we have prompt content, which is the way that we speak and frame our requests to these AI models. Then I'll go through multi-prompting, which is when and when not to use multiple different prompts for certain tasks and how they can work together for even better outputs. Then we have testing. This is how to review your outputs and refine your prompts to get better outputs. And lastly, we have guardrails, something that every one of these companies stresses the importance of, but very few people know how to do properly. So to get started with engineering prompts, it's always good to have a framework to work with. Google states that there are four main areas to consider when writing an effective prompt. First, we have the persona, then the task, context, and then format. The persona defines who exactly the AI is. In Google's example, they showcase you are a program manager, for a specific industry. This just helps the AI have really complete conviction in who it is and why it's doing what it's doing. We create personas for really every agent that we build within our agency as we've really found it makes quite an impact on that agent's ability to really follow through with any of the tasks that we give it. The next area is the task itself. So this is the most critical area of the prompt. This essentially is just explicitly stating what you intend to have happen. In Google's example, it's to draft an executive summary email. Their example is very brief, obviously, but a task could be multiple paragraphs long, depending on the complexity of that task. Here's another example of a task. The task is to plan activities for each day that include team bonding activities and time for deeper strategic work. Work. The next area with context is mainly used to give the agent everything that it needs to understand why that task is being done. So this might seem quite trivial, although for certain prompts, especially in this exact example I just showcased, it can really help shape the output to match exactly what you're expecting. I usually find this is really good at just hinting at the AI exactly what you'd like it to include, but you're not specifically saying that it should do it or shouldn't do it. In this example, it just needs a plan of some activities, but the context will really help tailor this response towards the type of people that are attending. Now, the last section of prompting is the format. So this just defines how exactly you want the AI response to be structured. In this example, it was prompted to be output in a table format. Now, obviously this part of the prompt really comes down to your preference. You can tell it to use markdown formatting and platforms like OpenAI and Gemini can actually process that markdown for easier viewing. So that is it for the basic structure of a prompt that have been outlined from all of these different guides. Although there is a key element missing from this particular framework. So this structure is a zero shot prompt, meaning there are no examples used to help guide the AI in its output. So depending on what you're building and what you intend the AI to say, examples can be very critical for the prompt to function. For example, conversational AI agents are really dependent on examples, things like a previous transcript example, uh, can assist quite significantly in its performance. So all of the guides across all these companies mention that when zero shot prompting doesn't work, you can provide examples in the prompt, which then leads to one shot or few shot prompting. Now a one shot prompt provides a single example, whereas a few shot prompt provides multiple examples to the model. They mentioned that you should use at least three to five examples for few shot prompting. You may need to use more examples for more complex tasks, or you may need to use fewer due to the input length limitation of your model. Anthropic states that in order to use examples effectively, that they must be one relevant. So actually mirroring your use case exactly, as well as diverse. So your examples should cover edge cases and really all the potential challenges and be varied enough that it covers the range of expected outputs for your prompts. If you're writing larger prompts, this could be for conversational agents once again, like chatbots or voice agents, or even applications generating outputs in the back end. OpenAI states that markdown formatting can really help increase the AI's contextual awareness. That just means it can read your prompts better, the better that you format it. So you can use markdown formatting in your prompts to create headings, subheadings, uh, to also apply bold or italic text as well. So we commonly use the main heading for each of the prompt sections like the persona and the task. And if we have multiple tasks, we'll usually create subheadings underneath the task. And if anything is really critical to the output, 
will either give it bold or italic text. I'd also recommend using a Markdown live preview tool to actually view the Markdown in its formatted state so you can actually see exactly how the AI is going to see your prompt. Now, if you are making simple requests to an AI where the context isn't likely to get lost, this is not something that would be necessary as it can take up quite a bit of time to set up. So now that you know how to get started on prompting using a proven framework, you now need to know exactly what to actually write within this framework. But luckily I've got four quick tips on how to effectively write to an AI. So for number one, use natural language. You've got to be writing the prompt as if you're speaking to another person and just express complete thoughts in full sentences. So a really common mistake is writing your prompts like code. These models have really been trained on the human language and that is just what works best. But number two, we've got being specific and iterating. So you need to clearly state everything that you want the AI to do quite precisely. So really providing as much context around that task as possible. OpenAI talks a lot about overprompting. So if you've got the capacity to add more context to your prompt and the cost isn't a huge factor to you, there's really no downside to adding more context and making it incredibly clear what your output expectations are. Number three, be concise and avoid complexity. So whilst you do need to ensure that the complete context is provided, like I just talked about, still make sure that there's no jargon and that every word has its purpose, absolutely needs to be there. We don't want to confuse the model with context that bleeds outside of the task and could potentially cause some complete confusion. For number four, we've got using AI to write your prompts. So when building prompts, things are likely to go wrong the first time, no doubt about it. So using general AI models to help in crafting and wording your prompts is an incredible hack. Within our own agency, we've actually created a dedicated GPT for crafting AI voice agent prompts. This means we are essentially sending our prompt into a GPT to sort of analyze it and it just quickly gives us some feedback to work on. So the next thing I wanna talk about is multi-prompting. So multi-prompting is another really powerful technique that shows up across all of these guides. So instead of relying on a single giant prompt to solve your exact problem, we're gonna be breaking down your workflow into multiple smaller prompts that all work together. So you can think of it as just dividing a big project into a bunch of smaller tasks. It just makes it a lot easier for the AI to handle and it usually produces much more reliable results. So there are three main ways that these companies are suggesting to use multi-prompting. Number one, we have sequential prompting. So this is when the output of one prompt becomes the input to the next. So for example, the first prompt might be summarize this research paper, and then the second prompt could be rewrite this summary in plain English for high school students. So what we're doing is really chaining these prompts together. Uh, and by doing this, you get really this sort of layered refinement that's quite hard to achieve in just one go. Google really highlights this as a great way to reduce hallucinations and just make sure that each step is focused on a dedicated part. So for number two, we've got parallel prompting. So parallel prompting means running multiple different prompts at the exact same time to generate really different perspectives and then comparing or combining those results. Now, Anthropic recommends this for creative work like idea generation or writing. The theory is that if you ask three different prompts for solutions to the same problem, you're gonna get some variety on the answer and then we can use all of those outputs at the same time and then chuck that into some other prompt and really just merge all of the best parts into one really strong answer. So for number three, we've got modular prompting. Nvidia calls this modular prompting where we are essentially creating reusable prompt blocks for some common tasks. For example, you might always use a standard sort of fact checking prompt after generating a long form answer, or you might use a tone adjuster prompt to rewrite text in a specific voice. By thinking of modules, we're sort of designing repeatable workflows instead of just reinventing the wheel and that prompt every single time. Key benefit of multi-prompting is that it makes these complex tasks a lot more manageable, whilst also improving the accuracy and creativity of the response. Instead of overloading the AI with one massive instruction set, really just letting it focus on one clear objective at a time. Now, one big thing to note is that all of the guides do still caution that you shouldn't overuse multi-prompting. Sometimes a single well-crafted prompt is more efficient. So the trick is knowing when to break things up and when to keep it simple. Now, if you are familiar with NNN, you'll know they've got plenty of tools and modules that really help assist in creating all three of these multi-prompting workflows quite easily. So if you're interested in a multi-prompting NNN full guide, let me know in the comments below. Now that you know how to structure prompts and write them effectively and even combine them with multi-prompting, the next step is testing. This is where the real improvements are gonna happen. So every guide I've read 
from Google to OpenAI really stresses that the first version of your prompt is really the best one, obviously. So testing is how we're gonna be refining it into something that is consistently producing high quality outputs. So there are three key areas to focus on when testing the prompts. Number one, we are gonna be benchmarking our outputs. Don't just eyeball whether a prompt is good or bad. Instead, run that same prompt multiple times across different test cases and compare the results. Anthropic recommends building a small set of benchmark inputs. This can be things like tricky edge cases, expected use cases, and even deliberately ambiguous queries. By running your prompt against these consistently, you can see if it's robust enough or if it just falls apart under pressure. Number two, we've got iterative refinement. OpenAI emphasizes that iteration is the fastest way to improve a prompt. We're just gonna change one thing at a time. For example, that could be adjusting the format instruction or adding just a little bit more context and then comparing the outputs. So this way, you know what's actually gonna be driving improvements, even logging every version of a prompt in some sort of a spreadsheet with some notes on what worked and what didn't. So we're gonna be able to track everything that's happening. Number three, we've got quantitative and qualitative evaluation. I know that sounds a bit scary, but it's actually very simple. Google suggests combining both human review and automated checks whenever possible. So for example, if you're building a customer service agent, you could measure the response time, whilst also having human testers actually judge the sort of tone and helpfulness of the response. The important thing to remember here is that testing really isn't a one-time step. As your use case evolves or as the AI models themselves update, as they do so often nowadays, you'll need to keep retesting your prompt quite a bit to make sure that they are still working as intended. Finally, let's talk about guardrails. So probably the most overlooked but critical part of prompt engineering. Every guide from Google, OpenAI, Anthropic, and NVIDIA stresses this. So no matter how good your prompt is, if you do not set boundaries, your AI will eventually wander off track. Guardrails are really about making sure that your system stays as safe as possible, as accurate as possible, and really just aligned with your goals. So these are the three main types of guardrails that you should be thinking about. Number one, we've got instruction guardrails. So these are built directly into your prompt. For example, you might explicitly say, if you don't know the answer, respond with, I don't know. Never make up statistics, instead suggest where I can verify the information. So by setting these boundaries in Inside the prompt itself, we are really reducing the risk of hallucinations and irrelevant responses. OpenAI emphasizes this as a really best practice for any customer facing AI where wrong or misleading answers can really damage trust. Number two, we've got output guardrails. So these are the checks that you run after the AI generates its response. Anthropic and NVIDIA both highlight using sort of modular prompts for this, like a second fact checker or policy enforcer prompt that reviews the AI's output. For example, you might pass every answer through a follow-up prompt that very simply could just ask, you know, does this output follow our company's safety rules? Uh, and if it doesn't, it's gonna get flagged. Number three, we've got a human in the loop guardrail. For higher stakes use cases, you should never really be relying on automation alone. Google specifically recommends this sort of layered system where the sensitive outputs like medical, legal, or financial advice are always reviewed by a human before being delivered. Now, obviously this slows things down. It's not as efficient, but at this stage, it's obviously ensuring that you're not putting any users at risk for those more critical areas. So the biggest takeaway across all of the guides for guardrails is that they are not optional. Whether that means instructing the AI to admit to uncertainty, adding some sort of an automated reviewer step or requiring some human checks, you do need a plan for what happens when the model doesn't behave the way you expect because it is gonna happen. Now, if you wanna become an even better prompt engineer, you can do so by joining my completely free AI school community. We've got over 15,000 members with 40 plus AI agent templates and courses. You can ask questions in the community and get help instantly. Once again, it's completely free. So I've included a link in the description.